So I was working on this demonstration project inside of Spring Boot to demonstrate how all the different mechanisms work in order to access remote web services. Everything was working fine yesterday, and today I go and run all the tests and disaster. I mean, look at this, red, 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 as far as the eye could see. Everything is failing on all of the tests all the way through. And I'm like, look, I wouldn't even hear what the heck happened. How could they all fail? And then, of course, I realized what had happened, and it's that the network was down. The network being down is what we call a precondition violation. Preconditions are Boolean expressions that must be true in order for the test you're running to have any chance to pass at all. If the preconditions are violated, then the tests are going to fail. It's inevitable. What do we do about this? Java, until comparatively recently, didn't have any precondition checking mechanism built in. In fact, Java often uses exceptions in order to check for preconditions. I mean, after all, what is a null pointer exception other than a precondition violation? I can't even call the method I want because the reference was null. Well, JUnit5 has a way to check for preconditions. Here is the assumptions class in JUnit5's API. The assumptions class is a collection of utility methods to support conditional test execution based on assumptions. In direct contrast to failed assertions, failed assumptions don't result in a failure, they result in a test being aborted or skipped or ignored. And what I want to show you is how I can use these assumptions in order to fix my problem, in order to check to see that at least the network is available before I go and try to test that I'm using the API correctly. In order to do this, I want to show you one method in the assumptions class. It's this method called assume true. There are six different overloads for this thing, but they all do the same thing. They say, give me a Boolean and an optional error message, and I'll check the Boolean. And if the Boolean does not get satisfied, then the test will be skipped. The test will be aborted. That's what I want. Now, I want to talk to you for a moment about the REST clients inside Spring and Spring Boot, but only to let you know what's in the GitHub repository. This isn't the video to go through those in detail. I just want to mention what's there, and then we'll get back to how to skip things when the network is down. Well, Spring and Spring Boot in the current release version have three different REST clients available. There's something called the web client, as they say here, a non-blocking reactive client with a fluent API. The old school REST template is a synchronous client. And then there's this new mechanism called HTTP interface, which is an annotated interface that will dynamically generate proxy implementations for you. I actually went to my application and I added in a milestone version of the next version of Spring so that I could use the fourth mechanism too, which is called the REST client. So in one of my services, for example, I've got three of the four. I've got the web client, the REST template, and the REST client, and the HTTP interfaces I use in another way. Everything in here is working, and in order to demonstrate that with the network up, let me execute the test. You can see in the results here, everything's green. All the tests are passing. And again, if you're interested in the details, they're all in the GitHub repository, and there's a link in the description. What I want to do now is show how to use the assume true method in JUnit to make sure that I skip the tests if the network's down. Let's look at how I can check whether the network is up or not. Let me give you the big picture. The big picture is for each RESTful web service, I'm going to try to make it so I do a head request before I do any other type of request on that service. An HTTP head request is like a GET request, but with only the headers and no body. Pretty much every service out there that supports GET requests also supports head requests. So that's what I'm going to rely on. Well, here's my first test. Now, the first test is put 
uses the before each method to execute this head request using the standard HTTP request response and client classes that come with Java 11. So nothing spring related here. As long as you've got Java 11 or above, you can do this. So the request uses a builder and a URI. And unfortunately, there's no dot head method like there's a dot get and a dot post inside of those. See, there's a get and a delete and post and put. The dot head method was added, but not until Java 18, and I'm on Java 17 here to work with Spring Boot 3. However, there's a workaround. You can use the method method with the string head here, say that I'm not sending anything in the body and I don't care about the response in my send. So here's the assume true method. If I threw an exception, I'm gonna say, yeah, the assumption failed, the Astro service is not available. If I don't throw an exception, I'm gonna check the status code on the response and see that I did get back an okay. That'll be the Boolean I check in the assume true method. So that's the first mechanism based on the standard HTTP client class. I should note, I also use that mechanism inside this joke service test as well. You can see the same HTTP response of type void, the request, and the HTTP client sending it. This time I didn't print anything out. Again, if the service threw an exception, I'll just say assume true or false. If we made it through, I'll check the status code and we'll be good. So I use that same mechanism on two of these web services. Now, the next mechanism, will go ahead and reuse that REST template. It's a synchronous call, but that's probably what I want in this case. I'm gonna make a head request and wait till it comes back and see if that worked. So what I did here in this geocoder service, or the test for the geocoder service rather, is I created, I, I auto-wired in a REST template builder, created the REST template, and I called the head for headers method. Again, the purpose is to do a head request and get back the HTTP headers and I'll print them. But the problem with the HTTP headers is there's no header that says what the status code is. There's no way to find out that I got back a 200 or anything like that. So I just checked that the headers app object was not empty. That's what I checked here. And if it is empty, then we're out. And again, if we threw an exception, we're out again. So there's the REST template mechanism. For the JSON placeholder test, I decided to use yet another mechanism. I decided to use the web test client that is available if you run a Spring Boot test on a random port. So this is more of a regular integration test. The web test client is like the web client, but it knows that random port. So we can go ahead and use it. That does in fact have a method to do a head request. Prepare an HTTP head request. There's the URI I'm going to. Go ahead and do an exchange and expect the status is okay. And if we throw an exception, once again, we will exit and put that inside the assume true and therefore skip the rest of the tests. The fourth mechanism built into Spring and Spring Boot is to use these HTTP interfaces. And you see here I have an interface called JSON placeholder service that's annotated with HTTP exchange. And then I have all these different annotations built in and along with a little Spring Bean I had to define, this will get Spring to generate all the code I need directly. There is a way to create a head request with that, but instead of there being a dedicated annotation like get exchange or post exchange or put exchange or delete exchange, for this one, I have to do an HTTP exchange with a method equals head. Thanks to Craig Walls for pointing that out for me. Craig Walls is the author of the excellent Spring in Action book, all six editions. Keep an eye out for his videos as well. So here is my built-in mechanism to have Spring do the request for me. Looking at the JSON placeholder service test, the one that is based on those HTTP exchange annotations that I showed before, this time I'm gonna take advantage of that head request. Now I wanna do some of my assumptions after everything is completed. Again, if I threw an exception, yes, I'm out. I wanna say assume true or false and skip the rest of the test. 
But in order to do the assumptions, when I do get back, I had to move the declaration of the response entity above the try block. So now I could say, assume that we did get back a non-null entity, and I could check the status code this time is a 2xx successful one, or sometimes a 3xx successful, but in this case, a 200 will be fine on this particular case. There, now I've got everything worked out. I've got all the protection I can get. Let me turn off my network. Oh, this is very stressful for me. And now I'm going to run the tests again and see that in fact I am protected from all of those failures. And sure enough, here they are. Everything is ignored. Everything is skipped and not failed. And I have protected myself from a bunch of tests that had no chance of passing. So there's your mechanism. All the code is in the GitHub repository. If you're interested in more about JUnit and the assert true mechanism, I have another video on that, which should be popping up now. I also have an entire playlist of testing videos and some extra videos on Spring Boot, and hopefully all of that will be helpful to you in one form or another. So thank you for your attention and good luck.